Hello, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masako. I am a senior consultant in the field of neuroanesthesiology and today I would like to cover a very interesting topic. Uh, what I have been seeing uh, in my experience is there are two types of doctors basically. Some, when I look at them, they look like an expert. Okay, The way they talk to the patient, and the way they counsel the patient, the way they conduct themselves, you can feel that they are an expert in those fields. And there are another set of doctors, when I see them, I feel they are very empathetic towards the patient. The way they conduct themselves will be totally different to this uh, expert variety. So then uh, what I did is, I actually understood that the speciality is demanding that kind of a behavior from them. So for example, if you are a neurosurgeon, then you have to behave like an expert. Okay, then you have to counsel the patient about the procedure, the risks associated. You have to talk about all the statistics associated with that particular tumor, if it's a complex brain tumor you're operating. At the same time, if you are a rehabilitation specialist, okay, physical medicine and rehabilitation, then you have to be more empathetic. It doesn't make sense if you talk numbers there. You have to be more empathetic. You have to develop deeper connections with the patient as well as the patient's family. So both requires two different kinds of mindsets. So what I did is, I separated the whole specialities which are present in the NEAT PG counseling into two different categories. Why I did that is, so from the training period, you need to develop that kind of a mindset. If you are projecting yourself as an expert, then you have to talk about numbers, statistics and all that. If you want to be empathetic from that time only, you have to understand human behavior, understand how relatives to be counseled and all those aspects you need to develop. Got it, no? And I hope you understood. So let us go into the uh, specialties which are coming into these categories. Okay. So both have the advantages and disadvantages and ideally what happens is there will be a combination. I will show you how it works. So you can see for example, there is a Dr. A and B. For example, say I did this. So Dr. A is coming into expert group. So he will have for example 85 percent expertise and 60 percent empathy and uh, there is a doctor b who will have you know empathy 90 percent and expertise 70 percent so that doesn't mean that why, why i'm showing the statistics is it doesn't mean that uh, you know if a specialty is in the expert group you shouldn't have the empathy if the percentage is vary so if a specialty is into the empathy group then your empathy component should be more at the same time you should have expertise without that you can't treat the patient so the way you talk totally differs so let me tell you uh, which specialties come under the expert and uh, the uh, empathy groups. First let me finish the expert list then I will go to the empathy list. In the expert list what spe which specialties I kept is most of the uh, surgical specialties which are uh, in a super specialty genre. Like for example neurosurgery, cardiac surgery, pediatric surgery. So in these specialties, so even if you are empathetic with the patient, you have to behave like an expert when you talk to them because all your complex surgeries and like outcomes are totally variable. So you have to tell them this particular tumor or this particular condition would have 80% success, 60% success, 70% success based on the disease because it will vary based. There are so many multiple factors which can uh, vary the outcome in these particular situations. So you need to be an expert and you have to talk to them in numbers. The same thing applies to anesthesiology and critical care. So in anesthesiology and critical care, so you have to be like an expert and you have to tell them the risk associated for exam based on the scoring systems. In anesthesia, for example, uh, there is a cardiac risk index and so many other scoring systems are there. They will tell you exactly what is the percentage of risk the patient can have in the perioperative period of getting a heart problem. So you have to talk the number there and you have to tell them. Okay. And the next is all the specialities which are behind the screen like pathology, micropathology, biochemistry and uh, forensic and uh, nuclear medicine, radiation, you know, that, radiology, radiation, oncology. So all the specialties, since anyway you are not facing the patient directly, right? So it makes sense if you behave like an expert, okay? If you develop expert mindset and go more deeper into your subject and the, uh, learn all the indexes and indices and, you know, all the stratification scores, it would benefit you. 
and also the neurology and uh, medical oncology. So what I observed is neurologists also need to be an expert because they deal a wide array of diseases in the spectrum of neurology and medical oncology is also the same. So when you are giving an oncology medicine, you have to tell them the chances of survival. So one medicine will have one survival, another medicine will have another survival. So when you are talking to the patient, you have to tell them. So with this medicine, the five year survival would be this percentage. With this medicine, it would be that percentage. So you need to talk in such angle. Radiation oncology is also a similar uh, thing. So these are the specialties, roughly understood, right? These are the specialties where you need to behave like an expert. So let us go to the empathy group. In empathy group, general surgery, I kept there because in general surgery, when you're operating a hernia, when you're operating a kind of hydrocele or uh, more, I don't call them simple surgeries, but outcome is pretty straightforward. So you don't expect so much of deviation there. There you will score more if you are more empathetic. So when you talk nicely to the patient, when you talk very nicely to the patient relatives, then you will become more popular and it is better in that way. Same thing applies to orthopedics, ENT, OBG. In OBG also, the outcome is very much predictable other than high risk cases. I am not telling every case is same, eclampsia, pre eclampsia, all those things are totally different. But in rest of the cases, people expect a very predictable outcome here. So here empathy plays a very key role. Same thing applies to all the medical branches like general medicine. Nephrology, gastroenterology, pulmonary medicine, geriatric medicine, family medicine. So in all the medical specialties, you if you talk numbers there, it doesn't make sense. So if somebody is coming to your OPD and if he's showing, if it's a geriatric or family medicine, if some old person is there, if you tell them that if you take this medicine, there is a possibility of you know this bunch of mortality, it doesn't make sense. Right? There you have to talk like their own person. There you have to develop a bond with them, relation with them, and then you have to develop empathy there. So you have to have that kind of a mindset and that kind of a counseling style. And same thing applies to dermatology and physical medicine and rehabilitation also and palliative medicine also comes under this category. So these are the different uh, specialities. I feel, uh, uh, no, I feel this is a division. There is no major reference for this. This is what I feel. I feel uh, your mindset should be tuned from beginning. From residency time, if you are watching this video, if you tune your mind like that, if you, the way you talk, if you modify like that, it would help you in a longer run. And any country you go, this is how they expect when you talk to the patients. So finally, remember that every doctor is a combination of both. It's not that you will only talk like an expert without empathy. There is a percentage of variation that I usually see in doctors. So that's about this video. Hope this video helps you in you know, getting some kind of a different perspective in your training. Okay. So thank you very much guys and follow the channel for more such exciting videos. The next video is about work-life balance and patient interaction both to have uh, there are uh, you know, three four specialities because what happens is when you have a kind of patient interaction you are losing work-life balance in most of the specialities for example in neurosurgery or pediatric surgery or anesthesiology or emergency you have good patient interaction but the thing is you lose work-life balance because you have to come in the nights night shifts and you know so many uh, 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 times if patient is bad you have to extend your stay in the hospital and the responsibility and ownership would be more. But there are few specialities where you have the patient facing capacity and your work-life balance also is there. So that I will do in the next video. For that you have to subscribe to the channel and then you have to uh, maybe click on the bell button also so, so that you get a notification and then you can see that particular video. And uh, join the channel for exclusive content which I will be making on some Middle Eastern countries and other uh, pathways. Uh, some I don't really want to keep in the open forum because uh, some uh, people when I interview they don't want to come into the open so I do private interviews and then you can actually have them in the channel for that you have to join and see the channel uh, videos which are only for members. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you very much for uh, following the video. Till the end, thank you.